have uh, proclaimed martial law in accordance with the powers vested in the President by the Constitution of the Philippines. Third World Geography by Sirua F. Bautista A country without miracles sits heavy on the map, thinking of banana trees rotting in the sunlight. The man who watches over it has commandeered all hopes, placed them in a sack, and tied its loose end. He goes around carrying it on his back. When asked what is inside, he says, Just a handful of feathers. Just a handful of feathers. That's how light the burden of Robin Hood is in peacetime. Any tyrant can turn into a metaphor. You kneel on the parched earth and pray for rice. Only the wind hears your useless words. A country without miracles tries to get it up from the page, but the bold ink and sharp colors hold it down. Before we analyze a poem, let us first know who Cirillo Bautista is. Cirillo F. Bautista was born on July 9, 1941 and died on May 6, 2018. He is a Filipino poet critic, fictionist, and essayist. He was named the National Artist for Literature on 2014 for his exceptional achievements and significant contributions to the development of Philippines literary arts. He is acknowledged by many people, including peers and critics, as a foremost writer of his generation. In this video, we are going to analyze one of his poems entitled Third World Geography. The Third World Geography Poem was written in a tone of a sad truth about our history, as the poem would remind you on what happened to people who have experienced martial law, and major problems in the government that happens in real life. However, it was also written in a tone of hope, because despite of poverty, hunger, agony, and lots of unfortunate things that the poem depicted, they didn't give up, or the people didn't give up. Now that we have analyzed the tone of the poem, let's now proceed to analyzing the theme of the poem to arrive in a more accurate theme analysis. We must first know the context of the poem. Third World Geography was written in the context of martial law, where Ferdinand Marcos was the president. After knowing the context and reading the poem, we can conclude that the general theme of the poem is agony. We can clearly observe the sufferings that were described in the poem online, you kneel on the parched earth and pray for rice, only the wind hears your useless words, and online, the country without miracles tries to get up from the page, but the bold ink and sharp colors hold it down. Those were the sufferings that were experienced by many Filipinos in that time of history. Moreover, we can also observe other underlying messages of the poem, which are hunger, tyranny, and oppression. Now let's move on to it. There's no doubt that all of us know what martial is. We were taught at an early age what this topic is all about. We all had this in our history class. There are a lot of sources online that enlightened us. That's why I thought that I already have enough understanding about this scenario until I read the third world geography by Sirino and Bautista. This poem planted an inevitable impact in every individual's heart. It becomes an eye-opener for everyone. It showed the darkest episode and the most horrible member of people who experience martial law. It caused me pain in how this poem depicts the leader who betrayed his fellow men by making them suffer from his abusive hands. There is an outburst of indignation when I read how they kept a deaf ear of poverty and hunger. This poem made me appreciate more the resiliency and the braveness of those people who didn't give up their freedom. The efforts of writers, journalists, and concerned citizens to revive the country from its present state by voicing out the argument is not wasted. This poem brought me to recognize how collective efforts from people. One change can create an enormous and powerful difference. It was kindness against our dealer. The 
third world geography awakens the patriotic side of peace, and that's the greatest impact. Moving on, let's go to the lesson of the poem. This poem depicts what happened back in the Philippines while it was still under martial law. The first lesson that we can get from this poem is that we should always scrutinize the people who are running for a government position because the future of our country is put in ours and their hands. It gave us a message so that we should always do what should be better for us, even if it feels difficult to achieve it. We must not give up in everything that makes our life feel difficult to live in. There is always a rainbow after a rain, and only the, the strong ones get to see it. So we should be strong and face every bump in the road, because that, it, that is what will make us who we are. Lastly, it taught us a strong lesson. We should be resilient and just have faith in God, no matter how heavy our problem is. Because even when we do not see and hear Him, he is always by our side, helping us, carrying our burdens, and He always knows what is the best for us, and is why we should always trust Him and His plan for us. I appeal to the civilians to stay calm.